And I raced up, you know, I had all my credentials on that allow me to interview presidents and vice presidents and delegates. And I raced up to the riot police and I said, you know, I'm a fully credentialed reporter. I've just run from the convention floor. Two of our producers are inside. They're fully credentialed. We need to have them released now. It wasn't seconds before they ripped me through that police line, slapped, pulled my arms back, slapped handcuffs on me, pushed me up against the wall and onto the ground and arrested me, charging me with interfering with a peace officer. If only there was a peace officer in the vicinity. I was desperately still from that vantage point on the ground looking for Nicole and Sharif. I couldn't find Nicole anywhere. I did see Sharif across the parking lot. He was standing with his arms behind his back. I demanded to be brought to him. They did finally bring me to him. We were both standing, our credentials around our neck. We were both handcuffed, demanding to be released, saying, we are the press. You see that. You see we're fully credentialed. We demand to be released. Whereupon the Secret Service came and ripped the credentials from around our necks. So I was then taken off to the police van, and there was Nicole. Uh, Sharif's arm was bloody. Nicole in the police van, her face was bleeding. She was handcuffed. She had her credentials on. She quickly told me what had happened. She said they'd gone to digitize tape at the TV studio for a show the next day. They heard a commotion outside, so they ran down. They wouldn't have been doing their job if they hadn't gone downstairs with camera and microphone to document what was happening on the streets. They ran downstairs. She didn't know she'd be filming her own violent arrest. They got downstairs. They saw some protesters. They saw the riot police. They were in this parking lot. She was trapped by parked cars. The riot police are coming at her as she's filming, and they're shouting, on your face, on your face. This is all documented on the videotape. And she's holding the camera. She's filming. She's holding up her press pass, and she's shouting back, press, press on your face. They take her down on her face. Her camera tumbles down. First thing they do is pull the battery out of her camera if you want to know what they wanted to stop happening. They take her down, face on the ground, knee her boot in her back, and they're dragging on her leg, which of course is bloodying her face. Um, Sharif is a very cool guy. He was telling the riot police to calm down. They took him, they threw him up against the wall, they kicked him twice in the chest, they took him down bloodying his arm. They face felony riot charges. I was uh, charged with misdemeanor, interfering with a peace officer. I was brought off to the police garage where they directed cages for the protesters. Sharif and Nicole were taken to jail. The response, because of independent media, the importance of grassroots media, they immediately put our video online, and it went viral, the most watched video of the first two days of the convention. I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of calls, emails, tweets, the St. Paul authorities, Minneapolis authorities got, but ultimately I believe that's what freed us that night. I was freed out of the uh, police cages, and uh, Nicole and Sharif were taken off, um, were, pulled, were released. To show the power of this response, Sharif was in a cell with an AP photographer and Sharif was released before the photographer was. You know, more than 40 journalists were arrested through this week. I was taken to the convention center that night and I was in the NBC Skybox. I was being interviewed by a network. And when the camera was over, the interview was done, an NBC reporter had been listening. And after they closed the camera, he said to me, I don't get it. He said, why wasn't I arrested? I said, oh, were you out covering the protests? And he said, no. I said, well, this is the thing. I'm not being arrested in the skybox either. <laughs> See, as... So it really is a good view of the convention floor. Um, <clears throat> but as Woody Allen says, 90% of life is just showing up. you got to get out there. It's our job to be at the convention, to interview the delegates. There are divisions between them and to find out what different regions of the country feel. It's our job to get into those corporate suites. Who's sponsoring the Republican Governors Association? You know, which electric company or oil company is sponsoring the Democratic Senate Campaign Committee to try to get in where they're serving those orders? I don't know how many doors were shut in our face as we tried to find out that. But to go from the suites to the streets where the thousands of uninvited guests are, those who don't get into these conventions, who also have a message. See, democracy is a messy thing, and it's our job to capture it all. And we shouldn't have to get a record when we try to put things on the record. Uh, the next day, I went to the police chief's news conference, right? That's our job. 
And when the police opened the door for me to come into the news conference, the police officer who opened the door was my was the officer who processed me in the police cages. And I said, you not only have to let me into this news conference, you have to let me out when it's done. <laughs> so I went to the news conference and Police Chief John Harrington talked about how successful the police operations had been for the first day of the operation. I raised my hand, I described what happened to Nicole, what happened to Sharif, and what happened to me, and I demanded to know what had he instructed his officers to do and how were reporters to operate in this atmosphere. He said we could embed embed in the mobile field force, embed in the police of St. Paul and Minneapolis, embed. The embedding process has brought the media to an all-time low. You know what he's talking about, like embed in the front lines of troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. When you are sleeping with the troops, when you're eating with the troops, when your life is in their hands, what kind of reporting do you think you will do? Reporters are brave who do that. But you get a perspective from the trigger end of the gun. It's our job to be in Iraqi communities and Afghan hospitals and the peace movement around the world as well to really address the full effects of war. And that is when talking about war abroad. And also not to be embedded in the establishment in Washington either. It's our job to be a part. That is why our profession is the only one explicitly protected by the U.S. Constitution, because we're supposed to be the check and balance on power. Not to be a party to the parties, but to be apart from them. And the idea that they have imported this embedding process to use it as a model of how we cover American cities, it is just not acceptable. Our second book, Static, that I wrote with my brother David Goodman, we chose that title because in this high-tech digital age with high-definition television and digital radio, still all we ever get is static. That veil of distortion, lies, misrepresentations, and half-truths. Well, what we need is the dictionary definition of static. That's what we need the media to give us. And that is criticism, opposition unwanted interference. We need a media that covers power, not covers for power. We need a media that is the fourth estate, not for the state. And we need a media that covers the movements that create static and make history. Democracy moves. embed the embed